Good evening, folks. This is Kyle, and I'm here with another Bible study. Luke chapter 24. This is the last chapter of this Bible study series. This is going to be amazing because this is about the resurrection of Jesus. So, last yesterday we talked about the crucifixion of Jesus, and basically the entire Bible is actually around the crucifixion of Jesus. Everything is connected to it, and yet it happened in one chapter. There's four witness accounts of it, and it goes so deep. There is so much to unravel about the crucifixion of who Jesus is, what he's done for us, and how much promises we have in him. It's really deep. <laughs> and as the psalm says, it's deep calls to deep. Um, so anyways, let's dive deep into chapter 24. The resurrection of Jesus. We're actually coming to Easter um, or and the Passover and really the celebration of Jesus' death and resurrection. So here we go. Very early that Sunday morning, which is why we go to church on Sunday morning because it's the resurrection day. The women made their way to the tomb. It was So just to point out too, in the New Testament, we see women lifted up um, and really have so much significance in what the Lord is doing. In fact, it was the women that was first there when Jesus resurrected. The women made their way to the tomb, carrying the spices they had prepared. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, Jesus' mother. Arriving at the tomb, they discovered that the huge stone covering the entrance had been rolled aside. So they went in to look, but the tomb was empty. The body of Jesus was gone. They stood there, stunned and perplexed. Suddenly, two men in dazzling white robes, shining like lightning, appeared before them. Terrified, the women fell to the ground on their faces. So every single time an angelic visitation happens, there is this uh, fear that comes uh, upon the visit. Um... But the two men in white said to them, Why would you look for the living one in a tomb? He is not here, for he has risen. Have you forgotten what he said to you while he was still in Galilee? In fact, actually, what I found about the personality of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is that God will actually start speaking to you and tell you, you know, what's going on. He, he kind of hints things to you. And then stuff, and then the things that he has planned for you happen. And he might even have spoken to you about something before, and there's going to be validation and confirmation to that. But anyways, the Son of Man is destined to be handed over to sinful men to be nailed to a cross, and on the third day he will rise again, uh, quoting Jesus. All at once they remembered his words. Leaving the tomb, they went to break the news to the eleven and to all the others of what they had seen and heard. When the disciples heard the testimony of the women, it made no sense, and they were unable to believe what they heard. But Peter jumped up and ran the entire distance to the tomb to see for himself. Stooping down, he looked inside and discovered it was empty. There's only the linen sheet lying there, staggered by this. He walked away, wondering what it meant. So, here we go. Jesus walks to Emmaus. Later that Sunday, two of Jesus' disciples, not of the eleven were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a journey of about 17 miles. They were in the midst of a discussion about all the events of the last few days when Jesus walked up and accompanied them in their journey. They were unaware that it was Jesus walking alongside them, for God prevented them from recognizing them. So there was still kind of a veil of Jesus of them knowing that Jesus was right there. But I, I believe that Jesus was attracted to this because they were talking about him and all the events that was happening. They were talking about God and what he was doing. And Jesus walks right alongside them. Jesus said to them, You seem to be in a deep discussion about something. What are you talking about? So sad and gloomy. They stopped and the one named Cleopas answered, Haven't you heard? Are you the only one in Jerusalem unaware of the things that have happened over the last few days? Jesus asked, what things? 
The things about Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they replied. He was a mighty prophet of God who performed miracles and wonders. His words were powerful and he had great favor with God and the people. But three days ago, the high priest and the rulers of the people sentenced him to death and had him crucified. We all hoped that he was the one who would redeem and rescue Israel. Early this morning, some of the women informed us of something amazing. They said they went to the tomb and found it empty. They claimed two angels appeared and told them that Jesus is now alive. Some of us went to see for ourselves and found the tomb exactly like the women said. But no one has seen him. It was actually women that were the first evangelists, the first ones to proclaim the gospel. Jesus said to them, Why are you so thick-headed? Why do you find it so hard to believe every word the prophets have spoken? Wasn't it necessary for Christ the Messiah to experience all these sufferings and then afterward to enter into his glory? Jesus always has a way of giving us questions that makes us think and reflect about what is true, really. Then he carefully unveiled to them the revelation of himself throughout the scripture. He started from the beginning and explained the writings of Moses and all the prophets, showing how they wrote of him and revealed the truth about himself. As they approached the village, Jesus walked on ahead, telling them he was going on to a distant place. They urged him to remain there and pleaded, stay with us, it will be dark soon. So Jesus went with them into the village. Joining them at the table for supper, he took bread and blessed it and broke it, then gave it to them. All at once, their eyes were opened and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly, in a flash, Jesus vanished from before their eyes. Stunned, they looked at each other and said, Why didn't we recognize it was him? Didn't our hearts burn with the flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. And this is how Jesus works. He gives us the revelation. He's the one that walks alongside of us, giving us revelation and what we need. And he gives us even questions for us to reflect on. They left at once and hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. When they found the eleven and the other disciples all together, they overheard them saying, It's really true. The Lord has risen from the dead. He even appeared to Peter. Then the two disciples told the others what had happened to them on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had unveiled himself as he broke bread with them. Jesus appeared to the disciples. While they were still discussing all of this, Jesus suddenly manifested right in front of their eyes. So Jesus um, actually supernaturally just appeared right before them. But yet remind you that Jesus is actually in the flesh. He's not just like a spirit being floating around. He is a flesh body. But he has a supernatural way of just appearing right before the disciples after he was resurrected. Startled and terrified, the disciples were convinced that they were seeing a ghost. Standing there among them, he said, be at peace. This is the first words that Jesus says to these disciples, be at peace. I am the living God. Don't be afraid. So be at peace. He's God. And don't be afraid. It's the same thing that he's saying to you right now. Don't let doubt or fear enter your hearts, for I am. Guard your heart. Don't let fear come into your heart. Come and gaze upon my pierced hands and feet. See for yourselves, it is I standing here alive. Touch me and know that my wounds are real. See that I have a body of flesh and bone. He showed them his pierced hands and feet and let them touch his wounds. The disciples were ecstatic yet dumbfounded, unable to fully comprehend it. Knowing that they were still wondering if he was real, Jesus said, here, let me show you. Give me something to eat. They handed him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and they watched him eat it. Then he said to them, Don't you remember the words that I spoke to you when I was still with you? I told you that everything written about me would be fulfilled, including all the prophecies from the law of Moses through the Psalms and the writings of the prophets that they would all find their fulfillment. He supernaturally unlocked their understanding to receive the revelation of the scriptures, then said to them, Everything that has happened fulfills what was prophesied of me. Christ the Messiah was destined to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Now you must go into all the nations and preach re repentance and forgiveness of sins that they will tur turn to me. So this is Jesus' commission. He tells us, his disciples, his believers, 
to go and preach the gospel, to tell everybody the good news that there is forgiveness of sins, that we are redeemed, that he came and died on the cross for us, that, and we have to repent of our sins, to turn away from sins, to turn to him. Start right here in Jerusalem, for you are my witnesses and have seen for yourselves all that has transpired, and I will send the fulfillment of the Father's promise to you. So stay here in the city until the mighty power of heaven falls upon you and wraps around you. So he also tells the disciples to wait for the next step. The ascension of Jesus. Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany. He lifted his hands over them and blessed them in his love. While he was still speaking out words of love and blessing, he floated off the ground into the sky, ascending into heaven before their very eyes. And all they could do was worship him. Overwhelmed and ecstatic with joy, they made their way back to Jerusalem. Every day they went to the temple praising and worshiping God. So this was a supernatural event that Jesus was died and rose again. He was resurrected and he interacted with his disciples. Um, in fact, in, other, in the other gospel account, it says that Jesus was actually resurrected for 40 days. Jesus was 40 days living and breathing with, in the flesh with people because he was still continuing his ministry and encouraging his people. Um, and what I, one of my teachers actually uh, revealed is that it, in, it was actually in turn for the 40 days that he was in, temp, in temptation with the devil. He was getting paid back the 40 days after the resurrection to minister to people, to encourage and build up his people. Um, so one of the footnotes that talks about the gospel, actually, um, it says, you know, the one who walked with his friends on the way to Emmaus wants to walk with us. May we never walk in sadness or unbelief, for Jesus has risen from the grave and lives victorious as a living God in resurrection life. May you pause here and rejoice, believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the only one who will bring us to the Father. Trust in him alone to save you, and you will spend eternity with him. So anything that you are going through, anything that you are bothered with, even these disciples were sad and grieved and in sorrow because they look at things from the natural, and they see also this man, a mighty prophet, you know, he died, and it was just a terrible event, and terrible events happen in this life on earth. But we, Jesus is saying, don't let the sorrow come into your heart. Don't be afraid. Do not fear. Um, and, and just believe in him. Trust in him that he is the living God. He loves you. He cares for you. He, ha he loves you with an everlasting love. And nothing can separate you from his love. Even your sin cannot truly separate his love. But what your sin does, it, it separates you. And maybe you even get a guilty conscience. But you have to bring it to the Lord before him. Um, repent of your sins. Uh, confess your sins to him. And believe him, you don't have to tell a person. You tell him directly because we can come to the Father God directly through Jesus Christ. He made a way. He's the narrow way. And he's the door to heaven. And he is the direct path straight to God the Father. We get to know the God the Father's personality and who God is through his son, Jesus Christ. And this, as these all these stories and all these chapters, it was an unveiling and revealing of God's personality. And there's even more to unwrap and unravel. So this is the end of our Luke Bible study series. This has been exciting for me. It's been fun. I enjoy it every day. Um, this is, is this is daily bread and Jesus is the bread of heaven. Now tomorrow I'm going to start a new series called Revelation Nuggets. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be such deep revelation that's not necessarily always talked about in church or other teachings. Certain teachings maybe, but it's going to be awesome. So God bless you and I will see you next time. Peace.